Hi everyone, I'm back with part two of the Roll Capsule Wardrobe. I This one took me some time to put together because I didn't want to just come here and do a dump of, of the things that I love because the things that I love are plenty and um, not all of those pieces are for everyone. I mean, it was just much easier for me to tell you which three pieces I think you should invest in, which uh, by the way was referenced in the first video uh, coat, shoes, and bags, because they're the things that sort of have the biggest impact on an outfit. But if you're past that point and you're loving the row and you want to build your row wardrobe and you're looking to maybe get five to 10 pieces in total, then there are some great options in the way of shirts and pants and, and sweaters and such. And that's what I, I want to talk to you about. I understand I mean, the row is a very high price point, so I wanted to be really thoughtful about which pieces I advise you to invest in. They're an investment. They, you want them to last, and they will because they're good quality, but what I mean is they need to be versatile, and they need to be wearable. So sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes the row will make pieces like mesh pieces or things that might be considered a little trendier. I mean, they're not trend, but trendier and I, I'm not going to suggest those pieces in this particular video. Um, I'm going to remind everyone, although you probably already know the row is oversized and relaxed and minimal, and I'm going to stick to a very neutral palette. Of course you can add a pop of color and by way of a shirt or something like that, but the pieces I'll suggest are classic and relatively timeless. They should work on most shapes. Um, if you are considering a piece and you're not sure you know which one or what sizing you can leave me a comment i'm pretty good about responding and i have a decent amount of knowledge on how the sizing works especially for the pieces that i'm going to talk about um, so let's start with uh what i think you'd wear the most and what i definitely reach for the most let's talk about denim i mean Everyone needs a pair of jeans or enjoys, I know, I don't know too many people that don't want a good pair of jeans in their wardrobe and I certainly live in mine. And when the row first introduced their denim, what I was thinking was, well, why wouldn't I just go to my vintage Levi's? And I love my vintage Levi's. They're still occupying a decent, uh, you know, sizable portion of my closet for sure. But I thought, well, why wouldn't I just reach for them? Why would I invest upwards of $800 Canadian, so say six to 800 US, um, in a pair of jeans when I could go to a Goldie or uh, R13 and, and other brands uh, for that have been making denim for many, many years. But once I tried the row jeans, I couldn't believe the quality, they're soft. And this is without spandex. This is 100% cotton and soft and not too heavy and rigid, which can sometimes be the case with all cotton denim. That's why I love the row jeans. And silhouettes for the row. I'm going to suggest a wide leg. Whenever you see the designers themselves, uh, whether it be pants or denim, they're usually a wide leg and they haven't strayed from this for many, many years. It's because it, it's effortless and that's the whole vibe of the row. And it's also comfortable and relaxed and I think that that is just far more important to me than trend will ever be. You also have to be mindful about your body shape so the rise needs to be considered. Some people like a high waist, some people like a mid waist, some people like a low waist. I like a low waist and so the row has a range of those. Let's talk about the jeans that I love, the Eglita. The very first version of this jean was the Egli and the difference between those two is the Egli was a little bit higher in the rise and Eglita is a bit lower, it's more of a mid rise but the leg is the same. It's a very wide leg, a very generous leg. When I first saw them on Ashley Olsen, when they were first introduced, I was that's when I was a bit skeptical. I thought, well, I, I didn't love that color blue. I've since come to love it, but I didn't love it originally. And I thought, well, I would just save my money and invest in another pair of denim. But since I've had my Eglita jeans, all of my other jeans are collecting dust. It's very strange. I I live in them. I mean, I was the type of person that would come home and kind of strip down and get into my track pants and sit on the couch. I'm sitting in my Eglita jeans right until I get into my pajamas. Um, they're very comfortable. 
They're very cool. They look great with a t-shirt and they look great with an oversized shirt and they look great with a blazer over top if you're going out for the evening. They look really good with um, a kitten heel. They re look really great with flip-flops. There's just endless options and wearability with the Aglita jeans and they're substantial. They're definitely one of those pieces that once you get and have, you'll understand why it was why you paid the money. It kind of works in reverse. You'll buy them and maybe you think, oh God, like what did I, what have I done? But then once you wear them over and over and you see how they work for you in your closet, you're going to understand why I'm suggesting them. And uh, so a couple of things, I would suggest go black and they had a couple of versions last year. They had one that was all cotton and they had a cotton linen blend. I picked up both because I wear them so often. And in the summer, when I don't wanna wear a dress, and I don't feel like wearing a maxi skirt. I reach for my linen cotton blend Eglita jeans and I hope they do them in white this summer. Hemming wise, I like my jeans to have one fold or one, one kind of crease um, at the ankle or near the ankle. I mean, I've had variations in my leg lengths. Sometimes I go with a 26 inch, which is just at the ankle. I do that often for certain types of vintage Levi's because of the rise of the jean, it suits that length. But for the Eglita, I want them to be long and I would suggest you get them long. And I mean almost ground grazing. And yeah, sometimes the hem gets a bit dirty, but you'd rather that than, than get them cut too short because then they just don't look right. So that's the jeans. Those are the very first thing. And the next thing is the knit. I've talked about this in a separate video, the Ophelia and the Sibim knit. These are two classic knits that are part of the essentials line for the row and they, they make them in um, a lot of neutral colors. Uh, there's black and gray, navy. They have slight variations in the Sibim sweater from season to season. It was the Sibyl, then the Sibim. The Sibim is a little longer than the Sibyl was and a little bit more generous even in the extra small. I kind of preferred the Sibyl sweater to be honest at five foot two, that suited me better. If you're sensitive to materials, don't worry about it. I am hypersensitive. I can't wear angora. I can't wear mohair or alpaca. I can't even wear certain types of cashmere unless it's done very well. These blends, the wool cashmere blends are actually quite perfect for me. The only thing is that the knits do pill and with very little wear, almost like out of the bag, they're gonna show a bit of wear. I like them. They look vintage that way. It doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, then maybe you have to go with something else. But the Sibim and the Ophelia are great options. The Ophelia, you've seen them on all the celebrities. It's a chunkier, heavier knit. I'm gonna ask you to refer to the other video though if you want more detailed information on what the difference is between the knits. But the reason I'm suggesting you invest in one of these is because in the winter for layering over a t-shirt, they're one of those, the, qual the quality's excellent and it's the style and the shape and the way they fall. They're very row, right? They're oversized and relaxed and they look great with your jeans. They're look, gonna look great with trousers as well and with maxi skirts. I've worn my knits with pretty much everything in my closet and I wear them time and time again. So when I'm not sure what I wanna wear, I throw on my jeans and I throw on my knit and I always feel pretty good, especially if I wear them with my Marie sneakers. It's that combination of comfort and stylish that I gravitate towards. Like I wanna feel stylish, I don't need to feel trendy, I wanna feel me, and those two pieces really do work. You could stop there and you'd be fine for a while. Now, if you're headed to the office or if you're needing something that's a little more stylish, then of course my third piece is going to be trousers. The trousers, so for those of you that don't wear denim, and I know I started with denim, and you're thinking, well, I don't actually wear jeans, but I would rather do a pant. This first pair is kind of like denim in the way that it's more casual. It could go casual or elegant, but they're easy and they're comfortable and they pretty much go with everything. So the gala pants. What might surprise you is I don't own them. Um, I have a lot of my followers on Instagram that constantly ask me about why haven't you ever talked about the gala? Why don't we see you in the gala? So the gala trousers are a bit of a higher waist. 
I'm short. I have actually very short legs and a longer torso. I also don't have a very generous behind. I find that the gala trousers actually flatten my back and I don't really like that look for me. I prefer a little more fabric back there and something to have a little more structured shape. So the uh, consistency of the material, it's never really flattering to my shape. And this is the thing, is that the gala are probably one of the most, um, they're probably one of the more popular styles that the row sells and what people often go in for when they're new clients. They want a bag and they want the gala trousers. The gala pants are excellent. They're very good quality. I've tried them on several times. I have friends that have them and they wear really well. And they they go for the evening with like kitten heels or on a beach with summer sandals and things like that. They're just an effortless pull on style pant with an elasticated waist and a wider leg. I love them. And if you have a figure for them, absolutely get the gala trousers. In the past, they did have a couple of pants that were similar and I, and I got them to so the Andreas was like a silk cotton blend and I, I had picked them up, but there's the material holds its shape. So when I'm walking, it, it kind of gives me, well, it's, it gives the illusion of shape. <laughs> so which is why I prefer those pants uh, to the gala. But the gala trousers are like the first trouser that a lot of people buy from the row and for a very good reason. And I would say they're pretty true to size and I would get them in the black. If the gala trousers are not for you and you want something of a more formal or classic tailored pant, then I would say go to the, I'm gonna get these names wrong, but the Banyu or the Bainy or the Bremi. They're a, not a skinny leg and not a very, very wide leg. They're like in the straight leg category. Very classic, very timeless. You're never going to see them go out of style, really. They're around and they have been and they will be. They're an update of the Pietro pants. I have the Pietro pants and the Pietro pants are really nice. They have that crease down the center. They're very formal and they're a bit of a lower waist, which I love. But if you want a wide leg pant, there are a couple of options. You could do more of a flat front or you could do a pleated trouser. And the ones that everyone was gaga all over, uh, I think when they were first introduced were the Igor pants. And I actually bought them, brought them home and found they did not work for me. I then tried them again in a cotton version a little later and I still didn't love the look because they were so high waisted on me. I pretty much like they'd come to here. It wasn't flattering. And again, if I don't feel great in the outfit, I'm not going to buy it and I don't care how popular they are and, and the fact that they were sold out and hard to get and everyone wanted them. It didn't matter to me because they just didn't suit my frame. That's pretty much my number one rule. It's even in the row when something is selling out, I'm not going to jump on and buy them unless I think that they're really great for my shape. Uh, so the Igor pants, really high waisted, pleated, wide leg, gorgeous on the right figure. The new uh, version of that pant, I'm sorry, I'm just going to check here. Every year they come up with all these new names for them and then just small iterations and I, I can't keep it all straight. I have some of them in my head, but so it's the Rufus and then there's the Rowan trousers where it pleated wide leg with a crease as well. And the Rowan are slightly lower than the Rufus. So you have a couple of options in the pleated pants with wide leg category, the Rufus, the Rowan. And every year, like, Every season, they're going to do small updates, whether it's by material or color or slight variations in the style itself, like they're just perfecting on perfection, and then you're gonna see new names. But you can find a consistency or a theme in the category of pleated wide leg and then straight leg, and then they're, they have a flat front. They made a pair of pants many years ago called the Carter Pants, and they were a wide leg flat front with a cuff at the bottom. To this date, they're still one of my favorite pants. I love them. And um, I wish they'd make more of them. I picked up the Pippa pants when they went on sale and they're still at uh, the alterations because I've just been lazy to pick them up, but they are probably going to serve the same purpose. These types of pants look great wide leg, I find with like a, a flat canvas sneaker. That's my favorite way to wear them. I don't ever doll them up because I feel like the pants are dolled up already. So that's the beauty of these pants, especially if you're going to the office any one of these are going to look good with your loafers, which are perfect again for the office, with a small heeled boot or with flats. So you, they kind of check off all those boxes. Professional, they're comfortable and relaxed, and they're versatile. In 
terms of color, you could go to like an ivory or cream. You could do black. I would suggest black. I, for capsules and basic foundational pieces, I'm always gonna suggest black and not just because black is my favorite color, but because black offers the most versatility. And over time you can add color to your wardrobe through other pieces and maybe not invest as much money in those colored pieces. What it's gonna come down to is really trial and error. I would suggest you find a retailer, an online retailer or one close to you that you like a lot or get into a row boutique, especially if you're in New York or London or in LA. Uh, if you are near a row boutique, that's even better because you can get in and try it there. But you need to try these pants on. I can suggest styles and what I think you need in your closet in terms of foundational pieces, but you need to go in and find out which size and which style suits you. I've made the suggestions. These are the ones that I would go to first, but every body is different and every pant is gonna look different on everybody. You, especially trousers with pleats, they are a funny, funny thing. If you're bigger in the middle, they don't suit you. If you're shorter waisted, they don't suit you. So if you're, they, you just have to try them. You have to trust me on this. Please try them. Please order multiple sizes in different styles and as long as there's an option to return them and try them on at home with uh, an oversized shirt or a basic tee and a pair of flats because pants always look great with a little heel. It's tough to wear them with flats sometimes, so I would actually say start with your flats and see if you like them and how you feel in them. Now for the shirts. What happened with me with shirts was when they, the very first shirt that drew me in and then I, that I decided, wow, I think I'm going to start collecting more and more of their shirts. It actually wasn't the big Sissia. I had the big Sissia and I liked it. And it's a great shirt. The quality of the cotton is excellent because it's thick enough that you don't worry about it being too sheer and it's soft and it's not stiff. I've actually done the dupe thing for this because sometimes places like Massimo or other vendors, they will have really beautiful colors and I don't wanna spend gobs of money on it, so I'll do that. Those are great shirts, but they're not the same. They're thinner, they're stiffer, they're true cotton, like what you think a cotton would be, where the rose cotton almost feels like it has a silk to it. It's it's smooth and really feels good on the skin and it wears well and it doesn't wrinkle as easily and it's not sheer. So the first few shirts I bought were the Sissia and the Sissa. But when Ashley had stepped out in that teal Luca, oh wow, that color, it's just memory burn. I went, I must have that color. I still have it, it's, it's gorgeous. But that, those shirts, they're the Luca. The Luca came in the burnt sienna kind of color and then that uh, teal, they are so tough to wear for my size because they're so big that even for me, I'm like with all the material in the extra small, I'm kind of struggling, but they're worth it because there are ways to work around it. And the Cecilia shirt is excellent. The Cecilia shirt, which is in the newer version, is excellent. Their shirts are well worth the money. You only need one or two of them. I would suggest getting white because you, then you've got, your, you've got your knit, you've got your egleted black jeans, you've got your black pants, and then you're gonna have your white oversized shirt. I definitely do stick to my true size because they're so generous. Notice that I'm not steering you towards fitted shirts, they come up feeling a bit more like theory, and I love theory. Uh, I wore that pretty much exclusively in my professional days, when in my accounting days. I still like them, but I feel like the fit and the feel are similar to some of the other brands, and so where I find it a little more difficult to do quality is in the oversized shirts that are like a little more generous, and but still stylish and still comfortable and flow nicely, because when you have that much more material, it needs to sit properly on the body. And so that's why I want you to look at the oversized shirts. And again, it goes with the relaxed, more fluid dressing of the row. They do excellent wool blend shirts and wool shirts. The Caroline is an example of that. Again, it, the fit is much like the Luca, it's oversized. You could do that shirt or the Regal, or Regal. I think it's the Regal. I have that in the gray and I'm just loving it. It's really comfortable and really lightweight and perfect amount of oversized. So lots of options. The big sissy, of course, is still one of my all time favorites. If you're not into shirts that are that big, then the big sissy is that in the middle shirt. It's not fitted and it's not oversized. It's right in the middle. It's probably one of the better shirts for a larger audience. Finally, uh, let's talk blazers. Blazers are hardworking pieces because 
we wear them over everything. Every closet I feel should have a black blazer. In fact, I feel like every closet needs a blazer, but it doesn't actually need that little black dress. I might be the only one that has that opinion, but uh, in terms of blazers, let's talk about the Obine and Dustina. They are part of the Rose Essentials line and they really do carry the code. They're long, they're oversized, they're black, they're lightweight, and they're really easy uh, because they work with everything. When the Dustina was first released, I was able to try it on. That's me in the middle a couple years ago and then left and right just a few days ago. It still, to me, holds such appeal because they it just works with everything. It seems to flow nicely as well. Now, the Obine is a little different. It's less fussy in a way because it has less detail. It also only has a single button. It's wider through the waist. It's not as lean as the Dustina. It's a little more generous in size and maybe easier than to get shirts and, and other things underneath. But then either one of these are really great options because they're very, very classic. If you like a more fitted blazer, then I would do the schoolgirl jacket. It's really cute. It uh, comes up short in the sleeves. If that bothers you, then that's not your blazer, but it's small and it's fitted and it's cute and it looks great. One of the blazers I bought recently and I do wear a lot is the Yadid and they brought it back. I didn't think this was going to be part of an essentials uh, line, but it looks like wholesalers reordered it and it's available again. It's a scuba blazer and it's a great, great material actually. It, and it's very fitted and really flattering. It's a bit long, so it covers the back. It's great because you can move easy in it because of the fabric, and I like that, of course, it comes in the black. One of the other double-breasted blazers that I really loved, well, I really love, is the Wilsonia. Pamela Anderson wore it to the Rose Show. I tried it on in Bergdorf's. You need to go with your true size or even a size smaller. It was just a bit too boxy for me. And for that price, I thought about the work would have to be done with the shoulders, but it's still on my brain because I want a pinstripe blazer and I really like the way that one looked. Um, you put all these things together, the shirt, the pants, the blazer, or the knit, the jeans, the blazer, and you really will feel the row. You feel the energy of the row. These pieces, any one of them that I've suggested uh, in black and white, because white and black are such a good contrast and they just pop and make everything look chic and sharp and formal. And these are pieces that are gonna go round and round with everything else that comes and goes in your closet. These are the pieces you'll probably hold on to the longest. The idea of a capsule wardrobe is you wanna buy pieces that you would invest in time and time again, but that you don't have to because you have the one and it's good enough. When you're spending this kind of money, you wanna be practical, you wanna be thoughtful, you wanna feel good and your best version of yourself. I hope this was helpful. Leave me a message if you have any questions and I'll get back to you and we'll see you again soon.